Hey folks, um, so I'm, I just recorded the uh, very first video and um, just for clarity, I'm going to record the second one over again too and um, make sure I'm referencing the uh, same lecture materials that I have in Brightspace. I'm realizing that the videos that we have here, some of them are referencing Blackboard. Um, ignore those things. Uh, the parts that cover the actual CAD graphics, AutoCAD um, portion of the lectures is, is still accurate and still can be used to, to do these drawing exercises. So this is lesson one. Um, and I already recorded the uh, video that covers um, the interface. So what I'm going to do with this one is pick up where we left off and um, add up the rest of the layers. So I'm going to be using in reference the layers that we need to see in this drawing. And then we will move on to adding some lines. So here's uh, the instructions. And we already added in the last video the center line, the visible line, and the hidden line. So I'm going to add the rest. But I'm going to show you some shortcuts to adding layers um, without having to, you know, retype everything um, so often. So I'm going to go into AutoCAD and type in LA to open up my layer control. And I'm going to click on the... Um, create new layer or you can hit alt n like we learned in the last lesson and then type in all of the layer names um, at once and I'm going to do that by just hitting a comma after um, I finish typing in the layer name. I'll also um, minimize AutoCAD so that I can see the other screen a little bit better and see the list of layers this way so I'll also minimize this so I can make that and show these two things side by side so I can see the layer names as I'm typing. And you can do this on your on your end as well. So now I've got the layer names visible right over here. And I can um, go back into my layer control. There are my layers right there. And go ahead and start typing in. There's layer one. I Because I started it and got out of it, by the way, you can change your layer name by right-clicking and choosing Rename Layer. So let's rename that one. It looks like we don't have chain. And then to create another layer, um, let's hit Alt N and make the next layer a uh, cutting plane. And then hit a comma and you'll see that it gives you a new layer to create. Dimensions, dimension, comma. Now we already have hand, uh, hidden, so I'll hit phantom, comma and section comma and then we have stitch comma and text now i'm done with that after i finish text so i'm just going to kind of click uh, anywhere on the layer dialog box to kind of finish creating um, my layers now they're not alphabetically listed yet so what i'm going to do is hit this little refresh button over here and it's going to put them in alphabetical order. And then it should match the list that we have over here. So if I go back into layers, is center, chain, cutting plane, dimension, hidden, phantom, section, stitch, text, invisible. Perfect. Um, now let's take a look at which layers have the same colors. So we have chain is cyan. What else is cyan? Nothing else is cyan in the list. So um, we'll just make chain the color cyan and move on to the next color. Um, we can see that um, hit, uh, excuse me, dimension and phantom are both magenta. So I'm going to select dimension, hold down the control key on my keyboard and click on phantom at the same time. So I have those two layers selected. Click on either one of the color swatches to change both of them to magenta at the same time. So this is a time saver little uh, trick to to make these changes. We only have one layer that's yellow, section. And by the way, every time my layers are going away, I just am typing in LA again um, and enter to open them up again. Whoops, LA, enter to open up the layers. The other thing is uh, I have the layer um, dialog box docked. So if you see it docked over there, not docked, but floating, I should say. Um, and it, once it collapses, you can just put your cursor over it and it will expand again, right? So se uh, section layer needs to be yellow. 
And then we have um, Stitch is blue. So let's go over here and just expand that. Stitch is already blue. And then text should be green. And then visible is already set to white. So let's also do that with our line types. So um, we every, almost everything is set to a center two line type because we copied from the center layer. Um, so let's go through and fix that. Uh, so uh, chain and uh, center are both center two. Uh, dimensions should be continuous. So should text and visible. So uh, actually uh, section, text, visible, and dimension should all be continuous line types. So I'm going to select um, visible even though it already set to continuous. Hold down my control key, select section, dimensions, and text and set all of those line types to continuous all at once. So now they're all set to continuous. There are two layers set to phantom, the phantom layer and the cutting plane layer. So let's go to cutting plane, highlight cutting plane here by just clicking on it, then hold down the control key and hit phantom and change those to phantom. Now we don't happen to have phantom loaded, but because of the last video, we learned how to load new line types if they're not loaded. Let's go look for Phantom. And it says to load Phantom 2. There it is. And then we have to actually select that line type from the list to apply it to the layers. And then the last line type we're looking for, it looks like, is a dot 2 line type for the stitch layer. So we're going to select stitch this time. Oops, this keeps opening up a block, so I wanted to turn that off. By the way, you click on that, it closes the layer dialog box completely. If I hit LA, it will open it back up again and just collapse it again. Um, so remember those commands. We know LA is layer. Um, I had an extra dialog box open over here, I think, because I accidentally hit some commands while I was demonstrating something to you all. And I just closed it by clicking on the X. Um, be careful with that though. If you click on this X, it's gonna close your drawing file um, uh, or here. And then if you click on this, you'll close the entire application. So when you're wanting to close a little dialog box, be careful to click on the X that pertains to the item that you wanna actually close down. Um, all right, so across from Stitch, that should be a dot two line type. It's not showing here, so I wanna load it and look for dot two. There it is, load that, whoops, and hit OK. So now our layers and um, uh, our colors and line types are all set. Last step is to make sure that our line weights are set according to the instructions. Um, so we want to check to see which line, which layers have common line weights. And I'm seeing that there are only three that should be to set to the 0.5 line weight. It looks like it's the chain line, the cutting plane line, and the visible line. So let's just verify. We have the visible line is already correct. The chain line, and I'm going to hold down the control key again and pick the cutting plane line and set both of those to 0.5. I must have deselected the chain line there accidentally, so I'll just do it again. All right, so now everything is set. Now some of the other layer controls that we have here is you can turn a layer on and off with this little um, light bulb. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, I recommend freezing layers instead. So when you freeze a layer, it turns into a snowflake, but one of the things AutoCAD will prevent you from doing is freezing a layer that's current. It will give you a um, warning. Um, and you don't want to freeze a layer or turn off a layer that you are currently in because it can cause you to um, end up uh, drawing lines that you don't see until you turn the layer back on again. So I'll demonstrate. Let's say I decide to turn off the center layer. It does give you a warning, but a lot of times these people, you know, when you get through doing the software, you forget to read these warnings. Um, so if I do say turn the layer off, um, and then start to draw things like a line. It looks like nothing happens. And it looks like, you know, AutoCAD's like sort of broken, right? But when I reveal that layer, I actually did successfully draw that line. It just was on a turned off 
layer. So um, to avoid that warning, freeze your layers with the little sun or snowflake rather than turning it off. It really does more or less the same thing. Freezing, it makes more sense than just turning it off. The next one is a lock, um, which what locking does is allow you to lock a layer so you can't accidentally move or shift things, but you can still see them. The next button is a little printer icon. If you put a little bullseye next to it, then it means that that layer will not print. And if we go beyond our line weights, um, we have some transparency and some um, other settings that we'll get to later on in the semester when we start working with paper space and model space. But for now, you just want to understand these layer states, um, how to change the color, the line type, the line weight, and then freezing, locking, and setting a, a layer to no print. Okay. So let's set our layer to the first layer that we need to draw the line in, which is center, and then we'll follow our instructions. So maximize the screen again. Uh, we started AutoCAD, we created an imperial drawing, we created the layers. Now we're going to create the lines shown on paper with the bottom line starting at 0, 0. And the bottom line, bottom line up here in this example drawing is the center line. And what this 0, 0 means is we want to start the line at the 0, 0 position, which is an absolute coordinate. And it happens to be right where these two x and y coordinates cross. So I've got the center line as the current layer, check 1. I've got um, a view of my um, absolute coordinate. Uh, so uh, I can see where the x and the y are intersecting. And I want to draw a line. So I'm going to type L for line and hit Enter. And then put in 0, comma, 0 as my start point. And you can, you'll see that your line will start right at the intersection of that x and y. Um, next, I want to look to see how long the line needs to be. It needs to be 10 inches. And we're going to use a tool called Direct Distance Entry. And all that means is I just simply push and drag my cursor in the direction I want the line to go in. And I want to make sure it's snapping to that 0 degree direction. And then all I have to do is type in 10 at my command line and hit enter. And that is going to give me a line that's exactly 10 units long. Um, so let's repeat that one more time. So first thing you have to do is type in L and enter. That starts the command. And then you have to read the command line. Specify your first point. So how can I do that? I know the line starts at 0, comma, 0, enter. And then I want to track to the right and make sure that my little green dashed line is showing up. Now, if you're not getting this, that means we don't have these tools turned on here. So you want to make sure those are on. And if you happen to be getting this situation where you've got a bunch of stuff showing up next to your cursor, you want to turn that off because I want to force you to look up here at the command line in the beginning because a lot happens up here at the command line that you can miss when you're using this uh, dynamic input. So to turn off your dynamic input, you first need to see that symbol. So you, if you don't see the symbol in your status, you want to go to the hamburger button and look for the dynamic input um, option and make sure there's a check next to it. And then once you have that check next to it, it will show up in blue if it's active. You want to turn it off by, by um, just clicking on it. And then uh, you, the uh, information showing up at the cursor will go away and it will allow you to type in uh, the, the um, length of the line in the command line up there instead. And you notice I did not have to put my cursor in the command line for it to go up there. Make sure your line is going in the correct direction and is following along that zero degree angle and type in 10 and then hit enter. And that means that line now is exactly 10 units long. And I can find that out too by selecting the line. When you select the line, these little grips show up. And I'm going to right click while that line is selected and go into properties. And in properties, it's going to tell me the length of the line right there. It's 10 units exactly. So what I typed in and what the computer did is exactly the same thing because I did it in the correct order. I followed the instructions in the command line. All right, so let's draw another line. So the next line is supposed to be 9.313 units long and it's the chain line. 
So the first thing I want to do is switch to my chain layer. And um, I have some additional instructions I got to pay attention to also here. It says, um, create the line shown on the paper uh, with layer at the bottom of the line starting at zero comma zero. Space each line 0.75 inches from each other and make them the length shown. So that means the distance between that point and this one should be 0.75 in the software. So I've got to change to the chain layer and then I actually have to start the line command again. So I'm going to type in L, enter. And at this point where it says specify start point, I can't type in 0, 0, but I could type in 0, 0.75 and do that math in my head. And that would create the line or put the line in the correct position. So if I drag that line in this direction again at 0 direction and put in 9.313, enter. The length of the line is correct and I can tell it's probably correct because it's just a little bit shy of the 10 inches and I'm done drawing that line so I can hit escape, right? Um, now there's another way to do that. Let's say um, you weren't at exactly 0 comma 0 on the Cartesian coordinate system so the math would be harder to do or you were in an arbitrary point might be easier for you to track off an existing point and put in a distance of 0.75. And it's the same concept we used when we drew the length of the line. So if I start the line command again, L, enter. At this point where it says specify first point, what I'm going to do and pay attention to my verbal instructions here too, is I'm going to put my cursor over the end point of the line and you'll see a green box appear. That's because we have these object snaps turned on. And the object snaps we have turned on are endpoint, midpoint, center, node, quadrant, and intersection. Now, if you don't have all of these object snaps turned on, all you have to do is click on it to add it, either take away or add the checkbox next to the item that should be checked off. So go ahead on your own computer and check that by clicking on that um, list of object snaps and making sure that you have the same object snaps that I do. Um, so because of that object snap, um, I am getting a green box at the end point of this line. And once I see that green box, I am not using my mouse's left or right buttons at all. All I'm doing is dragging from that reference point, and this is called O-tracking. So we're now tracking off of a reference object snap. We hovered there long enough to let AutoCAD know that we think it's an important point that we want to reference from. And then once you just start moving your cursor from it, you'll start to see a green line appear. And I'm moving my cursor up in the direction I want my new line to begin in. And I'm going to put in a distance of 0.75. And that does exactly the same thing. Now I want to track in the direction I want the line to be drawn in, which is to that zero degree direction and put in 9.313. And I'm going to get the same result. Okay. So let's carry on to the next few lines. We have um, a cutting plane line, which is 6.875. So let's change to cutting plane. L for line. And I'm going to hover over the center line this time, or chain line rather, not the center line. Track up from that point until I see that green dash and type in 0.75. And then put in the length of that new line, 6.875 forget already. 6.875. And then you're going to hit escape, go to the next one, and make the next line. So this one's got a bit unique instruction though. It says use the DLI command to create this dimension line. Let's see what the DLI command is. I'm going to type in DLI and the command name comes up as dim linear. I want to hit this little question mark next to it to see what that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, 
All right, so the linear means it's a linear dimension. And so it's creating both extension lines and a dimension line is going to give us a dimension between two points. Shows us that we need to pick one point and then another. Um, the way this drawing has been set up, by the way, is that we can use the previous line drawn, the cutting plane line, to define the length of our dimension line. It's using the same points, it's the same length. So we're going to actually use the end point of each one of the lines as our point one and point two for our dimension line and create it. So let's see if we can follow the instructions to create the dimension line. So it says first, um, first, second extension line origins and then it's kind of showing or demonstrating how we're supposed to use that command. So let's see. Let's see if we can figure out how to, how to use this. So I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna to switch to the dimensions layer and type in DLI and follow the command line. What is it asking me to do first? Specify first extension line origin. And because we have our object snaps on, I can click the end point of that cutting plane line or um, whatever that line was <laughs> as my first start point. And then now it's asking me to pick the second extension line. I can pick the other end point of the same line. And then it gives me a dimension and extension line. Now I want that dimension extension line to be exactly 0.75 from the line I just drew. So I'm going to use that same hovering over the uh, reference point. This is a triangle notice this time. So this is a midpoint of the line, but I can use that midpoint and track off of it and move my cursor in the direction I want the dimension line to go and then type in the actual distance I want it to be 0.75. So it just measured that distance for me by me typing that in. Now I am noticing that the line weights of these things look like they might be a little bit off. I think, um, let's see, my cutting plane line should be a 0.5 line. My center line should be a 0.25. I think I might have some things switched. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's go into layers and look to see what we've got going on. So my cutting plane line is default, whereas my center line is 0.5. So let's switch it to the correct settings, default for center, and across from cutting plane line, we're gonna make that 0.5. So you're gonna make mistakes like that as well. As long as you understand the concepts, it's gonna be really easy for you to fix it. And the beauty of doing it this way by layer is that those changes we just made in the layers automatically get updated in our drawing. We, there's no need to redraw those lines. So we can just fix those things after the fact. All right, we're gonna do one more of these lines. I'm gonna let you um, finish the rest of these on the line part on your own. So I'm gonna switch to hidden line and take a look at the length the hidden line needs to be. 7.9. The distance for the hidden line should be 0.75 from where the end point of the arrow is. So be careful to measure off the correct location. Um, I've got a hidden line layer. I'm going to type L enter and specifying my start point. I'm going to use the end point of the arrow as my reference point this time. Ah, I've got a different symbol. I've got an intersection symbol. And so that's where I wanna reference my line uh, distance from my last line from. So as soon as I see that symbol, I can start tracking up from that point. And if it's not tracking correctly, like mine doesn't seem to be tracking up correctly. Let's try that again. Keep going back until you get the symbol you need and until it tracks in the right direction. So notice that I zoomed in and zoomed at, back, to, back out again. So it might be that it's not gonna let you track from the intersection but it will let you track. Notice that we're getting both an intersection and a hidden line symbol. That's because these two lines are technically intersecting and also we have an endpoint of this line here. So as soon as you get the right symbol and you're able to track in a vertical direction, go ahead and, go ahead and put in 0.75 and draw that next line in, 7.9. And the next line, I, I know I lied. I said I was going to stop at that one, but I'm going to do one more. The le next line is a phantom line at 8.2. So let's start L enter. I'm going to track off of the end point of this line, move up, 
move my cursor up and put 0.75 and then put in 8.2. All right, now I made a mistake. I accidentally drew this on the hidden layer. What do I do? So I want to select that line. First of all, hit escape. Make sure you don't have anything showing up here in the command line. Click on that line so you get these grips. And then while those grips are showing, use the home tab, the section that covers the layer section and, and switch the layer for that selected object to the correct layer. And you'll see as you move your cursor over the different layers, the um, screen will give you a preview of what it's supposed to look like. So um, complete the rest of these lines, making sure to start them all uh, from the same vertical or horizontal location, but you're going to make them 0.375 inches apart from each other as you draw them and make them all the correct line length per the lesson. So this is really giving you a chance to go through a command repetitively and learn what are the steps, read your command line, and get used to your objects uh, snaps polar tracking and um, O tracking.